Hello again. Um, this, pocket, this is podcast number four, uh, looking at the long-term significance of um, the Night of the Long Knives, uh, those crucial events of the 30th of June 1934. Uh, now, this particular podcast, um, uh, and the next one, the last one, will focus very much on Hitler, okay, um, which really is sort of probably the key um, aspect why the Night of the Long Knives was so important. The Hitler Myth. Now, The Hitler Myth was actually the title of a book that was written in the late 1980s by the historian Ian Kershaw. Um, there's the mind map, um, and the, the, the strand, obviously, that we're looking at here is, um, is there. Um, just um, going back again to um, Kershaw's book, it really was a, gr- a groundbreaking book because um, what he did is he distinguished between the sort of reality that we know as historians, which were different from perceptions at the time. Um, so just starting with the, the former, what do, we know, what, what do we know about Hitler okay, as historians now writing with the distance of time between us and those events? Well, we look at the Night of the Long Knives and we can see that they revealed Hitler's true nature. Okay? For the first time, we can see that the pretense of legality had been dropped. Um, the methods that Hitler used um, on June the 30th, 1934, were gangster tactics. Okay? Um, he had put on this pretense, this camouflage of legality ever since he'd been let out of jail um, at the end of 1924. Um, he had pretended to be a normal politician in terms of his pathway to power. Um, even after having taken power, um, even during the incredibly violent months of 1933, the first six months of Hitler's chancellorship in which um, the national uprising energy of the SA was channelled against the communists and the socialists. Even during that period, he maintained the pretense of legality. We've done that, the legal revolution, the Reichstag fire decree and the Enabling Act. Um, and that, 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 that pretense of legality has now gone. Okay? Obviously, we can now see that as historians. He's dropped that camouflage. However, and there's the cover of um, the book written by Ian Kershaw, and as you can see, he, it was called Image, or subtitle, Image and Reality in the Third Reich. Okay, so he's distinguishing between image and reality. So that's the, that's the reality, okay? Nazism was um, effectively a violent, illegal movement. We now know that. But it was not perceived that way at that particular time by many Germans. And in particular, I suppose, we're talking about middle-class Germans, ordinary Germans, Germans who respected the values of law and order, did not see this act of violence on the 30th of June as being violent, as being as being illegal, as being disorderly, okay? Um, so ordinary Germans um, did not view Hitler's actions as being murderous, okay? Instead, and this is what we have got to sort of try to get our minds around, ordinary Germans viewed that decision to murder the SA leadership as evidence of Hitler's moderation, of being a moderate, okay? Why was that? Because on the 30th of June, Hitler, the leader of Germany, had taken decisive action to restore order, to bring order to Germany. Um, Now, for that, I think we just need to sort of think back to the 12 months before the Night of the Long Knives, okay, and what was actually happening. Um, So again, I'm just going to um, revisit... Um, that sort of crucial diagram which we'll keep looking at. You've got Hitler at the top, okay? Over here, parking it to one side, you've got the state. And that's the apparatus that was there before Hitler came to power, and it's still there in 1933 and 1934, and it will continue to be there. The state is 
the machinery of government. It is the police force, it is the schools, it is the civil service, it is the government ministries, it is basically the machinery that ensures that you have law and order in society. It creates order. So the state is highly valued by the middle classes in particular. It's valued by all Germans. But I suppose in particular, people with property, with jobs, with professions, they need to know that that there is law and order. Because if there is not law and order in society, then you lose everything. So the middle classes in particular value the state. Now what we know, of course, is that Hitler ultimately wants to take over the state. Because the state is staffed and manned by non-Nazis. It's manned by people from before Hitler took power. Um, in particular, it's manned by um, many people from the old Kaiserreich. It's manned f- from people with, with, with status, and, and in particular Prussians. And, and Hitler ultimately needs and wants to take over the running of the state. But as we've said, he can't afford to do that. Um, remember the, that key speech in, in the summer of 1933, um, where he called a halt to the violence of the first, of the first six months of power. Okay, the SA had been let off the leash, and that violence was being channeled against the the immediate enemies, the socialists and the communists. And once the SA started to sort of talk about channeling the violence against the state, against the people with power and influence, Hitler gave that key speech. No, we need to, for the time being, channel the revolution into the secure bed of evolution, which basically means I'm stopping the revolution for the time being. I want to keep the state, the state as it is. Um, so effectively, he's drawing a line there. Now, Hitler, of course, is the leader of... Remember, we did this in the previous podcast. You've got the party, and you've got the SA... And of course, within the SA, you've got the SS. Now, how did they, how did the people who who were within these two movements, the Party and the SA, feel about calling a halt to the Second Revolution? Well, to some extent, within both the Party and the SA, there was frustration because these people, the people within the Party and the people within the SA, what they basically wanted to happen was they wanted to get jobs. They wanted to take over aspects of the state. And there was frustration there. Um, <clears throat> just because Hitler gave a speech doesn't mean that, that therefore, if you're a party member or if you're a member of the SA, that you behaved yourself, OK? Um, over the next 12 months, they, 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 they vented that frustration in all sorts of ways, OK? So that there was sporadic violence. Um, they muscled in. They tried to take over jobs. Um, uh, uh, with it within within the state apparatus, um, and in particular within the party itself, um, there was um, a lot of low level corruption. A lot of people joined the party because they thought benefits would come now that Hitler was dictator of Germany, um, and so the general people of Germany, the vast majority of people who were standing on the sidelines watching this, who who valued Hitler, who had voted for him because he was promising to create jobs. As we move into 1934, they're increasingly unsettled. They're asking the question, is Hitler really capable of retaining law and order? That's what it's about. Hitler needs to protect the state. Um, He needs to ensure that the state can carry on doing its jobs. And these party members, and in particular the SA, are constantly venting their frustrations, trying to take jobs in the state, and they're expressing, you know, demands that they want to have top jobs, they want our jobs, etc., etc. So that caused a great deal of sort of anxiety. So, going back to the sort of key point, when party behaviour got out of hand after the Night of the Long Knives, there was effectively a different perception, okay, because on the night of the Long Knives, the 30th of June, what Hitler had done is he had dealt with the problem of the, of the SA. He had shown, look, I am prepared to step in and defend the state and nip this behaviour in the bud, if necessary, yeah, as in this case, by actually executing the leading members of my own movement. So 
the middle classes who felt threatened by this ongoing behaviour of the party in the SA actually saw Hitler's violence as, as, as stepping in to restore law and order to Germany. So what then happened after the Night of the Long Knives, if party activists, radicals, members of the SA or members of the Nazi party, um, if their behaviour got out of hand again and they did things that upset people on the grassroots of society at the, at the level of the street, then ordinary people would make an excuse on Hitler's behalf. They would say things like, if Hitler knew about this, he would stop it because he had shown that he was willing to take decisive action against the extremists in his own party on the 30th of June 1934. He did it then, so he will, he, he will do it again. So when... And the, 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 throughout the whole of the 12 years of the Weimar Rep of the, the Third Reich, when party activists, people at the grass level, low-level party members like block wardens or SA you know, stormtroopers, if they did things um, which made the middle classes feel uncomfortable, um, that they felt was threatening law and order, they never blamed Hitler for it. They said Hitler has shown that he disapproves of, of, of disorderly behaviour. He took action on the 30th of June and he will do it again if he knows about it. So they never blamed Hitler. What that basically did is it acted as a safety valve. Okay, It meant that when throughout, throughout the 12 years of the Third Reich, whenever there was grumblings, whenever ordinary people felt unhappy and unsettled, rather than blame Hitler, they blamed the party. Okay, so what it did is it diffused potential opposition in the future. Okay, now that was actually very helpful because when Hitler, we know he did order unpopular actions. Okay, an example may be, for example, the the uh, Kristallnacht in nineteen thirty eight, and that, that was very very unsettling um, for um, ordinary Germans. Um, <coughs> Ordinary Germans would often make an excuse for Hitler and they would blame the party for that. They would say things like, if Hitler knew about it, he would stop it. Okay? So therefore, um, if people were thinking about opposing Nazism, they wouldn't because they would actually think, no, I don't want to oppose Hitler. Hitler is separate from the party. The problems I'm seeing are caused by the party not caused by Hitler. Hit and that all comes back to the significance of the Night of the Long Knives. Okay? So in that sense, the Night of the Long Knives had separated Hitler from his own party in the minds of many ordinary German people. Hitler was above petty behaviour of ordinary party members. Okay, thank you.